Many of you who have attended previous gold medal galas know that I like to draw a theme from the for the evening from our organization's motto, Celebrate Knowledge. Like most mottos, the National Institutes is broad enough to admit of several interpretations and different elaborations, but the one I've chosen tonight is pretty straightforward. Consider, celebrated or not, knowledge just doesn't lie in the ground, neatly labeled knowledge and tied up with a bright yellow bow. Knowledge needs to be sought out, discovered, classified, and categorized into the overarching frame of other knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is one of the principal activities of humankind, one which employs the greatest efforts of legions of scientists, scholars, and explorers, past, present, and future, who try to add to the body of knowledge which human society and culture has built and hopefully will continue to build over time. It is one, if frankly not the most important, of humanity's achievements that we have collectively increased the stock of knowledge on our own little blue planet. As far as we know for sure, we may be the only species in the universe which has done so. And however it, unlikely it may seem to some, we may be the only one to ever do so. So we should be proud of our knowledge, celebrate it even. But discovering and creating knowledge isn't the whole story, now is it? Once discovered and created, what do we do with knowledge? Well, normally we want to preserve it in some way by writing it down, storing it, or archiving it. Knowledge doesn't do us much good if the guy or gal who found it never tells anybody and kicks the bucket. But knowledge doesn't do much good moldering in a library or decaying slowly on a hard drive somewhere either. In fact, knowledge is only really useful if it lives in another person's brain. If, in fact, people who did not discover or create a piece of knowledge actually have access to it, understand it, and use it. But here's the rub. Knowledge just doesn't leap off the page or the computer screen into someone's brain. It needs to be transmitted somehow. And lots of knowledge just isn't obvious enough on its face that a person with no previous exposure to it can comprehend it by themselves or even recognize its value. Furthermore, pieces of knowledge do not stand alone, ready to be picked up and used for their singular dedicated purpose and then put back on the shelf. Each individual piece of knowledge is embedded inside an enormous edifice of assumptions, qualifications, and supporting information that frames it, limits it, and even contradicts it in certain circumstances. So in order to have value, knowledge must not only be discovered or created, but it also must be transmitted to other human beings in context. The normal word we use for this process is education. And that is our theme tonight, education. Tonight we are gathered to honor three remarkable individuals who, in very different ways, have dedicated their careers to furthering humanity's progress and well-being by educating their fellow human beings. Dr. Philip J. Landrigan is an epidemiologist who discovered or helped discover critical threats to children's health arising from lead, pesticides, and asbestos. But he didn't stop there. He used his knowledge to educate the rest of us about these threats and has built a reputation as one of the most prominent advocates of public health, especially for children in the world. Jennifer J. Robb has served as the president of Hunter College in the City University of New York for the past 21 years. During that time, this former lawyer has utterly transformed Hunter from a small, underfunded, open admissions institution into a selective, highly ranked public college with a highly diverse student population comprised of one of America's largest concentrations of immigrant and first-generation students. She has made education itself better and broadened its reach to many never before reached by it. Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist and director of the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History. But he has made his biggest impact on society by being a prolific communicator of the wonders and mysteries of science to the general public, using every communications method available, with the possible exception of two cans tied together with a string. He'll have to correct me later if I'm wrong. He is an author, an essayist, a columnist, a radio host, a television host, a podcast host, a government commissioner, a keynote speaker, and a video game developer. He has called himself, on occasion, a scientist and educator. These are all highly accomplished individuals who have dedicated themselves 
like Prometheus, to bringing the fire of knowledge to humanity, to education in its deepest and most important sense. Unlike Prometheus, however, tonight they get to eat a nice steak dinner with all of us instead of having their livers pecked out. Progress, am I right? So stay tuned. I look forward to sharing a discussion among our honorees with you later in the program. In the meantime, enjoy your dinner and your dinner partners. We'll talk again soon.